Hi everybody, 大家好 I welcome you to Jay Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. This is the fifth video of this year's Chinese New Year series, and we are continuing with, of course, more dragons. So let's get started. Annual disclaimer: Since I will be talking about Chinese traditions and cultures, I will be calling it Chinese New Year instead of the Lunar New Year. We went over how Chinese dragons, long. Play such an important role in Chinese culture. We've also gone over some very popular, notable Chinese dragon figures. Now let's see them in a more popular setting. Let's start first with popular folktale and stories. We see dragons several times in classic literature, sometimes as help to the protagonist, but also sometimes as the antagonist. In Xi You Ji. The journey to the west. We actually see one of the dragon kings, Ao Guang, several times throughout the story. He is the king of the East Sea. The most notable was when Sun Wukong received his iconic weapon, the Rui Jinggu Bang, a powerful and mythological magical staff. It was an unmovable treasure in Ao Guang's palace. Called the pillar holding down the sea. When Wu Kong took it, he also forced the Dragon King to give him more magical gifts: the golden chainmail, a phoenix feather cap, and cloud walking boots. We see Ao Guang again in Wu Kong's fight against Red Boy. He helped by providing rain in an attempt to stop Red Boy's fire, but failed. Unable to help, he returned to the East Sea. But his reign does help later on in another adventure, where Wu Kong asks for his assistance in a rainmaking competition and creating an elixir. Ao Lie is another dragon seen in Journey to the West and actually plays a role in the main cast. He is a dragon prince and is the third son of Ao Run, the Dragon King of the West Sea. He goes by many names like. Yulong, Jade Dragon, but most importantly, he is known as Bai Long Ma, the White Dragon Horse. This is because he served as the steed to the Tang Monk throughout the novel after swallowing the original horse in one gulp. We see Ao Guang again in Feng Shen Yan Yi, the Investiture of the Gods. Here he is seen more as an antagonist, along with his son Ao Bing. Ao Bing is also a dragon prince and third son of Ao Guang. In the novel, originally a rain god, but he became corrupted like his father over time and terrorized the people. In the novel, he confronts Ne Jia in battle, but was overcome and slain. Which led to a lot more conflicts down the plot. Though his character can be seen in a more positive light in the 2019 animated film Ne Jia, and in Bai Shu Zhuan, The Legend of White Snake, in the climatic battle, White Snake summons a flood, and she does this by calling upon her ally, the Dragon King, to help her. We also have dragon-themed holidays, which I've covered in previous videos. But here's a quick breakdown: Duan Wu Jie, the Dragon Boat Festival, happens on the fifth day of the fifth lunar month. This festival began after Chu Yuan, a well-loved official, threw himself into the river. The people rowed out in boats to locate his body, and when they couldn't, they made glutinous rice dumplings to throw into the river. So that the fish will eat the dumplings and not Chu Yuan's body. It's called the Dragon Boat Festival because one of the traditions are dragon boat races. These long boats bear the images of dragons, with a dragon head and tail. A more legendary version of this tale is that during the Eastern Han Dynasty, a man dreamt of Chu Yuan. Chu Yuan told him that the rice dumplings they were offering were all being eaten by the dragons in the river, so they had to wrap them in china berry leaves and tie them with colored strings. 
These were both things that dragons hated and would prevent the dragons from eating all the rice dumplings. Another theory of the origin stemmed from dragon worship. The dragon boats were a reflection of dragon reverence, while the rice dumplings were meant originally as offerings to the dragon king. Long Tai To, the Dragon Head Raising Festival, happens on the second day of the second lunar month. This festival is named based on the ancient Chinese constellation system. The Azure Dragon is one of the 28 mansions. During this time, the antlers of the dragon rises above the horizon at dusk, while the other mansions of the dragon's body are unseen. So the festival is literally because the astrological dragon has begun to raise its head. During this time of the solar term, there was a change in the rain patterns. Remember, rain and water are associated with dragons, so the dragon mansion brought more rain, making it an important agrarian festival. Foods were also renamed to be associated with dragons and were eaten for prosperity and luck. Which brings us to our next point, dragon-based food. Long thin noodles were called long shu mian, dragon whisker noodles. Eating them was symbolic of a long life expectancy and longevity. Dumplings are sometimes called long er, dragon ears. Dumplings have always been symbols of luck and prosperity, so calling them dragon ears made them even more lucky. Long ling bing. Dragon scale pancakes are a variation of scallion pancakes, although the more modern ones can also look like cute cookies. Speaking of foods based on dragons, I am so excited to be able to talk about my favorite dragon based dessert Dragon's Beard Candy. Long Shu Tang, Dragon's Beard Candy, also known as Chinese cotton candy. Not only is it a traditional confection, but is also considered a traditional art form. The origin of this treat goes back to the Han Dynasty. The emperor was enjoying a new type of hand-pulled sugar treat. After finishing, some of the white wisps were stuck on his face and it resembled dragon whiskers due to its thin strands and thus the name came to be. Another story for the origin and its name was because this candy was only meant for royalty. Remember, dragons were the imperial symbol of the emperor, and that's how this candy became associated with the mythological beast, which made it so special. Dragon's Beard Candy is very labor intensive. Even though the ingredients are simple, it requires a lot of skill. The fun thing about it is that its theatrical preparation is just as important as the rich taste. To make it, you simmer cane or maltose sugar and let it cool into a hard gel. Slowly and meticulously, you stretch out the puck into a ring before folding it over and over again until you have thousands of thin strands of delicate candy. Because of its delicate nature, it's sensitive to temperature and moisture. It's usually recommended to eat dragon's beer candy right away, or else there's a high chance of it dissolving or melting. Thankfully, over time, this dessert, which was originally only meant for royalty, is now accessible to the common folk. You can often see it at festivals or at night markets. Since it's the new year, you can't forget popular dragon-themed idioms and blessings of prosperity. Here are some popular ones that you can use for the upcoming year. Long Ma Jing Shen, a very popular one. It means the spirit and vitality of the dragon and horse. So we use it when we're trying to wish someone good health. Long Nian Da Ji means great luck in the year of the dragon. 
which is perfect for this year. Longhua Tun Nuan means dragon heralding a warm spring. It's meant for wishing for a good start to the new year. I swear, I can go on and on about dragons and have enough videos for the rest of the year. But again, this just continues to show how important dragons are to Chinese culture. Need a new fit for the new year? Check out my Teespring! I have a lot of super cute designs that are perfect for the new year, so please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. So what do you guys think? What are your favorite parts of today's video? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. You can also let me know what topics you'd like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to J Palace Yamingong. I would very much appreciate it. This is the fifth video of this year's Chinese New Year series, so stay tuned for one more. And until next time, 新年快乐! 再见了, bye bye!